Mm. I'm excited to have you all for the day two of the IICS show 2023. Day one was absolutely amazing. We had a very, very good footfall. We had some very insightful panel discussions, but day two is gonna be even better because we have more panel discussions, more of a debate, more interaction. So today is gonna to be a very, very fruitful day. We're delighted to have you all here at India's largest logistics exhibition to bring air, ocean, and surface all under one roof. IICS 2023, powered by All Cargo Group, is India's most dynamic and comprehensive multimodal cargo and logistic event. As a testament to the pivotal role of logistics in propelling the nation forward, IICS seamlessly aligns with the evolving needs of the logistics industry. The IICS conference is more than a mere gathering. It is a dynamic junction of ideas, insights, and inspirations. With 75 plus speakers across various facilities of cargo and logistics, the collective wisdom of speakers and attendees will deliver unparalleled insights that will fuel growth and innovation. <clears throat> Over the course of three days at this exhibition and conference, leading industry brands are all set to showcase their latest innovations and strategies. The hand-picked speakers are ready to share their insight and knowledge. The shippers visiting us here are ready to explore new avenues for distribution. Absolutely, if it is cargo and logistic, it is right here. D1 of the IICS 2023 witnessed industry stalwarts sharing their thought leadership and future ideology. From the grand inauguration to the pre-nominal ribbon cutting, Day one of IICS show 2023 was an event second to none in the industry. The conference also has focus discussed around the future ready strategies of the logistic industry. The audience had a notepad full of valuable insights to take away. With the charismatic energy of yesterday, we are eager to start day two of this IICS show 2023. Let me also take a moment to thank our partners and sponsors without whom this event would not have been possible. Powered by sponsor All Cargo Logistics, a platinum sponsor Turkish Cargo, a gold sponsor Samsara Group and Etihad Cargo, a lanyard sponsor JW Ventures, a lounge sponsor Adani Airport Holdings, and our badge sponsor, SLS Group. We begin our day with the extraordinary and delve into the logistics. Moving the extraordinary, rising opportunities and reducing risk in Project Cargo. Project Cargo emerges as a pivotal player, steering growth through large-scale projects and infrastructure in DVOs. Today's session centers on the dynamic landscape where expertise, technology, and innovative solutions converge to propel the project cargo industry to new heights. The panel promises to be a rich exploration into the realm where challenges meet solutions and opportunities emerge from the extraordinary. For that, I would like to first invite on stage our absolutely wonderful moderator for the first panel discussion for today, Mr. Nailesh Gandhi, Managing Director, Express Group of Companies. He holds an expertise in integrated project logistics, cranes rental and alternate lifting, liquid logistics, 3PL and warehousing, custom brokerage, freight forwarding, engineering and hospitality. He has handled large petrochemical, ONG, power, infra projects, and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, just let's start this day with more energy and give him a big round of applause, Mr. Nilesh Gandhi. Welcome, sir. Moving on to our next speaker for today, I would like to invite on stage Captain Pankaj Mehrotra, CEO, shipping agency, Samsara Group. 
with an impressive 30 year voyage in the industry he has been instrumental in the overall development of agency business and expansion of the group into various shipping and logistic verticals ladies and gentlemen a big round of applause for captain pankaj merotra welcome sir moving on to our next speaker i would like to invite on stage mr supal shah chief executive officer sarja container lines with 23 years of expertise in shipping and logistics he's a driving innovation and global expansion showcasing remarkable leadership and commitment to excellence ladies and gentlemen let's hear it from mr supal shah welcome sir Moving on to our next speaker, I would like to invite on stage Mr. Shashikant Misra, Joint General Manager, SCM and Logistics, l and Hydrocarbon Engineering. A maestro with 27 years of expertise, beginning as a heavy lift transport engineer, now soaring with l and undertaking mega projects for industry giants like Samsung, Reliance and Petrofac. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Mr. Shashi Khan Mishra. And our last speaker for this panel discussion, I would like to call on stage Mr. Anand Ayer, Head Corporate Exim and Commercial Thormix Limited, the powerhouse of customs and logistics expertise at the renowned engineering Thermix Limited with over 22 years of dynamic leadership. He's the driving force behind customs, trade compliance, and logistics. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it from Mr. Anand Ayer. We welcome you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful panel discussion. Over to you, Mr. Gandhi. Good morning, my esteemed panel, senior colleagues, Mukesh Bhai, project specialist, ladies and gentlemen. I thank IICS, I thank Mohit and his team for setting up this wonderful collaborative event. I thank all the participants to be here today, allowing us to meet make new friends and gain some knowledge and exchange some ideas. And I thank all my friends on this panel to make this session happen. Integrated project logistics is a very special subject. It needs a high level of spe specialization, commitment, planning, innovation, and teamwork. No two projects are the same, never. Each project needs high level of study, debate, discussions, solution building, and most important is risk analysis. The job of a project specialist is to find a needle in a haystack. They need to list out each and every challenge that can be experienced during executing a project. They need to have a plan and a solution in place in advance. They need to examine every aspect of handling the project and handling transportation of super heavy lift and super ODC cargo. The role of a project logistics team is to deliver a pin to an elephant. The job is to deliver from factory to foundation seamlessly and safely. For all of this, you need a super team, a specialist team, a team that can deliver. Friends, this is the team on my left. 
we are grateful and highly obliged and to have this committed and specialized team. Take my word, my friends, you'll gain some knowledge today with this panel. I assure you that. Mind you, to deliver a project, we have to consider law of the land, be it the, the origin or destination. We need to consider all modes of transport, all types of infrastructure. We have to consider engineering, be it civil, mechanical, or marine. We need to use various types of softwares to design the transport. We need to consider various types of vessels, equipments, and vehicles to deliver the project. Let me share some numbers uh, on, on India, how project, what we need to consider while delivering a project cargo. India's landmass area is almost 3.2 million square kilometers. This is 2.4% of the world mass. We have a network of 6.3 million, a road network of 6.3 million, which is almost 2.4% of the world. Uh, the second largest, sorry, the second largest road network in the world. Of this, we have only 0.23 kilometers, 2-3 million kilometers of highway. We have 6,40,000 villages to cover and 15,000 bridges to cross. We have tolls every 60 kilometers. We have 12 million commercial vehicles, 326 passenger vehicles to take care of or dodge while delivering these huge packages. We issue 900 million e-wables in a year. So now you can imagine the traffic on the road. We have a fabulous railway network of 64,000 kilometers fourth largest in the world. Mind you, we have 32,000 plus railway crossings to consider while delivering project cargo. We have 7,000 kilometers of coastal and 14,500 kilometers of inland waterways to cover to deliver the project cargo. We have street lights, street cameras, highway cameras, hoardings, power shutdown, railway shutdown, and obviously some friendly animals roaming around to take care of while delivering the project cargo. We need to cross these villages. We have to cover tunnels. We have to cover guards. We have to take sharp U-turns to make this project cargo delivered at the right destination. Every kilometer needs to be measured, documented, discussed, before we start the project cargo movement. And to do all of this, we have a very special team on my left, which I call it the super team, who, cons who, as a, who delivers such a project cargo. They have a specialization in this field. So friends, we have a lot to cover and little time, so we'll do our best, and uh, we thank you for being here, and we'll start our session uh, with some very important uh, you know, questions. So I'll just go back to my... So friends, uh, you know, any project, you have to deliver, break it up into different segments. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and break it up in three or four segments and try and cover some parts of project delivery. Um, so the very first step is planning and documentation. So with this, I'd like to start with, uh, you know, Anand. Anand, uh, you know, documentation being the very first step uh, for any and every actual operation. What do you have to say on the importance of a detailed study 
a deep dive into quality documentation, be it invoice, packing list, drawings, licenses, method statement, okay, or what are the requirements of the, the destination, whether it's, it's your own country or it's, it's, it's uh, the receiving uh, uh, some other country. Uh, and to extend this uh, in the era of digitization, where all are the dots getting connected? Do you expect any challenge during cargo clearance or any liability post clearance where the documentation is incomplete or incorrect? So I've just merged two questions if you don't mind. Thank you, Nilesh Bhai, and it's been an absolute pleasure. I would like to start with thanking IICS, Ayushi, and the organizing team all together. And I really express my absolute gratitude to be a part of, uh, invited, as, as an invitee to be a part of uh, this show to express my thoughts around it. And thanks, Nilesh Bhai, for this question on it. Uh, see, I would like to, again, put it in two buckets on this. One, as you initially said, what's the importance of documentation? On this, I would say, like a health checkup that we do, this is something which has to be around across, okay? Everyone in the room at the working level, at the senior level, understand the documents, say it an invoice, say it a packing list, say it a bill of lading and everything. But does people have time to go through the nitty gritties of the document is something that one has to really look into. Do the people, whoever are handling it, are they putting time in order to go through the document completely? I would say even in my team, when we are looking into it, we are absolute guys in terms of compliance, in terms of driving the documentation, everything, but we still feel short when the pressure comes into the play. In order to push through a lot of things in a fast track manner where there is a pressure from the shipment clearance, invoicing, uh, getting it into the vessel, moving out and everything, some way or the other, we either catch up on something or we miss on something. So in this, I would say one has to be absolutely diligent uh, in the documentation and right from the inception of any project, one has to be so thoughtful that anything from the operations team, whoever has any comment, should be tried to get addressed at a right time. And we should see that our team at the ground level are involved who are in the process of operations to be around and they are heard every now and then. So that's the reason I just said as a health checkup, as we started doing it over a period of time, whether we like it or not, a yearly health checkup, a quarterly health checkup, depending upon the diabetes or the kind of thing, let us start having a meeting internally with the team member, understand from them what are the gravities of it, how is it that we are doing it, and what are the problems that has been faced. And in that sense, I would say it's an absolute need to have the documentation done appropriately, wherein the minutes of meeting, whatever has been discussed, how is it that we are implementing it has to be seen. In that, I would say many a time we had seen that we only look at invoice from the buyer, seller, item description, unit of measure, and value purpose on it. But there are few other things which are absolute, absolutely critical on that front, like the HS code. As you rightly said, post-clearance activities, at the time of shipment, when we try to do it, we say shipment clear, ho gaya hai, that is done. But post-shipment clearance, the challenges that are being faced subsequently, say two years, three years down the lane, when something comes up from the scrutiny perspective from the department, many a time people face challenges on it. So on that front, one should look at the HS classification as a key part along with the other ancillary things. The notes that gets into the invoices, many a time in terms of a, uh, FOC shipment that gets handled on a DDP basis, what are the comments that are being done? Similarly, in terms of the re-import of the materials that happens, what are the comments that are being there in it? So these are the few areas that we need to look into. Many a time I had seen that people take FOC as a grant. Commercial shipment still get through, there is not too much of challenge that happens across, but in project logistics, many a time FOC is a very concerning area and which has to be addressed differently. Why I am saying this is because everyone is across with the great experience in the panel, so I might not be add too much of value. I'm just touching upon the concerning points wherein the small shipments have an absolute challenge in order to clear through when it comes to the, in comparison to the big shipments on it. Second thing on the uh, planning purpose, which I always insist across, 
I always tell my team as well as the teams across on it, saying that collect the information depending upon the kind of projects that you are working in, start looking at the compliance angles to it and then try to take control. Don't try to start controlling the activities at the last stage and take people for granted saying that ye hamara kaam nahi hai, ye tumhara kaam hai. Don't get into that mode. Always ensure that as a team, we are working collaboratively across the partnership level depending upon whoever is it. As an importer, as a supplier, as a CHA, as a freight forwarder, whoever are in the chain are has, have to be equally respected and have to be equally thought as an absolute partner in order to deliver it. This is something which is a major ask from across the divisions on it and across the people on it. And also on the other side with respect to the fraternity from the freight forwarding and uh, CHA side, I would say that it's just not the shipper or it's just not the consignee who has a challenge in it. Many a time as a licensing team, as a bridge between the customs and this, lot of critical activities are being played and with respect to the push that generally we give it to the team on it, many a time it happens that under that pressure somebody at the working level gets that cleared and we have challenges at a later end. So I would say let us be very diligent, thoughtful in order to address everything in a right manner, right spirit so that the challenges post clearance does not come into play. The next point from the digital initiative side I said uh, I would like to add on that today Everything is transparent and this I had been repeating it in most of my things saying that whatever we do across is visible to someone or the other in the system. So you are not left behind on that front. And when it comes to the shipment clearances and other stuff, everything in today's data capturing mode or the AI, ML, whatever you call it as in terms of a technology, everything is visible across to everyone. So you cannot miss on anything. Those were the days which were gone, jahan pe, chalo, ek bar humne kiya hai, chalta hai. This chalta hai attitude, we should completely avoid it and we should ensure that we are in a go-getting mode. We do it at a right time, at a right place, at a, uh, the right thing, so that it helps us to move ahead. This was the second thing I would say. And from the digitization perspective, yes, data gathering, data information, data analytics are going to be the key thing, which is driving the industry across all the parameters, I would say. It's just not one area which is being touched. Like, again, the health industry, I would say, it's just not diagnosis. It's everything in the chain in order to keep us healthy and making a move, something that we have to look into is. And documentation is a key, like how hospital maintains the complete data sheet about every operations at any point of time so that at a later date, somebody can go back and check what has happened to this patient two years back, three years back, and that becomes a case history in order to do it now. So that should be the kind of approach that we should do it from every other sense. Because now, department comes back to you from every sense, just, just not for that shipment. It might be six months, it might be two years, it might be three years, it might be three years, five years kind of thing. So for that, are we absolutely ready in order to retrieve it, keep things that are and handy is what something that we should look into it. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Uh, I, I really, uh, you know, appreciate your importance on uh, planning and documentation. I mean, I can imagine one miss or one slip. We, we may miss a tide to do the multimodal transport or monsoon may be heading and we cannot afford a, a, a week's delay in customs clearance or any movement. So I think what's important in project is to see that every aspect is, is, is examined and just not you know, uh, take things for granted. Uh, Supal, uh, you know, you've been a bridge between the Indian exporter and the, uh, the receiver of the cargo. Uh, and as we all know, more and more, uh, you know, project cargos are also getting uh, unitized uh, um, and, and being shipped in special containers. Uh, what is your message to the cargo owners and uh, LSPs for safety handling and delivering of, of project cargo uh, by the special equipments? Thank you, <coughs> Nailesh Pai. First of all, uh, congratulations to the Mohit and the entire uh, team uh, IICS for this uh, wonderful gathering. I will start first uh, with a little bit in the industry that uh, I represent the company Sarjak Container Lines. We are a project logistics service provider. 
and uh, we focus smaller parcel of the project cargo. So if you break the project cargo, then uh, you have a smaller parcel which can now containerize, which nailage by say unitize. And then you have a mid-size parcel which generally go as a brake bulk heavy lift. And then you have a super heavy parcel which actually you customize your logistic solution. Uh, before probably I touch upon uh, uh, the real question, let's set about the how the containerized vessel has played a vital role in giving very effective logistic solutions for the smaller parcel of the project cargo. Uh, unfortunately, there is no industrial published data which anyone can refer uh, because project cargo, smaller parcel can go on open top flat rack, which we call it a special equipment. And naturally, with the bigger and bigger size of the vessel, there are a brick bulk operations, which is now very popular for your logistics of your project cargo. We did an in-house research and we learned that globally there are around 2.5 million TUs of the project logistics cargo, a smaller parcel for which goes normally either in special equipments or on a container vessels through the brick bulk operations. And when we converted in terms of the terms, it is around 15 million tons of project cargo, which so earlier the cargo which used to be carried by the brick bulk or heavy lift vessel is containerized. And believe me, friends, it's, it's a huge. Setting a tone, what precautions we should take? I think the biggest precaution in selecting your vendor partner. Globally, if we take a benchmark of the logistics cost, because let's understand all the project cargo is customized cargo. Normally, you build project cargo for your factories, for your expansion, so these are not the normal consumer cargo. Even if say there is a delay, then you quickly replace because the opportunity cost of probably delaying your billion dollar projects. So uh, most important, according to me, is selecting a right partner. There are a lot of knowledge required. Again, most important, another very important aspect, how do you stuff the cargo? I have seen today where all the freight forwarders who probably approach us uh, small or big, many times they do not do their homework, especially with the weight, the center point of gravity, how do you stuff and lashing. The biggest problem in the mind, we want to save cost, and this is across, not only in a logistics, but probably at the export or importer side. I have a two panel speaker who represents a very big shippers. And they will also agree that there is a, so much pressure in reducing a logistics cost but I don't think so that is true for project logistics. Globally, the benchmark is 8%, and for a project logistics, around 10% of your cost you should invest in shipping your project cargo, irrespective whether it is a smaller parcel or a bigger parcel. But most important, do not compromise in your lashing and choking. I have seen, again, we have always a lot of claims coming on us as a shipping line, where customers do not do a proper lashing chalking, they compromise the quality, they do not use the proper dunnage to distribute the weight of the cargo, and then naturally, because when the same cargo is on a vessel and uh, will have a multiple handling, there are high chances and more risk for accidents. So very important, select your partner who has a proper infrastructure, who has a proper knowledge, and probably this will definitely help you to uh, you know, uh, ship your cargo effectively. Thank you, Nilesh Bhai. Thank you, Supal. Sachi ji, uh, you know, you've managed uh, huge multimodal transport uh, projects of large volumes, uh, super ODC and you know, super heavy packages. These cargo needs uh, multiple modes of transport, be it barge plus ocean vessel, plus road transportation. It's, it's super complex. Uh, cargo that needs uh, special equipments, uh, a special team, and the most important, which is it's a watertight plan. In this component of project logistics, what do you have to say 
uh, are the main ingredients or the requirements of a well-planned uh, delivery, uh, Mishra ji. Thank you so much, Nilesh bhai. And thank you very much for having me here. I appreciate IOC and her team for organizing this conference so well. So I'll request all of you to give a big round of applause to her. And I think, I think tirelessly she has, she has worked for more than one month to bring this you know, conference here and to make this conference successful. Nalesh Bhai has, has given me something which is very close to my heart. Last time also in last conference, somebody from the audience said me that India is a very poor country. So today also I remind you, now India has become a rich country. And we all should feel proud of it. And I'm very excited. If you ask me today, we were executing a project of 0 0.5 billion, 0 0.6 billion, 0 0.7 billion, and max we have done 1.2 billion. But today, India has changed. We have got a project of 5 billion. And believe me, we are really scared. We are trying to talk to Nalesh Bhai because I think you should give a big round of applause to Nalesh Bhai for acquiring a big company called Fejoli. So today, today, you know, what we are talking about, the companies, mega projects, we have to be very truthful. And if you are not truthful, then we will be talking about challenges, we will be talking about infrastructure, we will be talking about permissions, then we will talk about digitization, and today digitization means tracking of the cargo. Digitization is not that. So I'll start something about the project, and then I will uh, involve you, and I want a very interactive session from the audience also to be a part of our discussion, so that we can make this, you know, uh, heavy lift transportation is successful, you know, the combination of all the stakeholders. When we receive a packing list, it is a challenge for, uh, before to that, I will, I'll, I'll tell you the EPC business. For LSP, logistic service provider, packing list is the Bible. Once he receives packing list, he starts segregating and he starts looking at which will be a general cargo, which will be a mid-size ODC, and which will be ODC and super ODC. And after a month, we come out with the new idea, new packing list, revision 01, and we said that the height change ho gaya hai. And we never realized that a small change in your height is going to create a big problem, big challenge for your entire project. So I will talk on that, I'll, I'll discuss on that. Once we receive the packing list in the proposal stage, so everybody get pressurized and we start with the packing list. And we submit our tender, and on award of tender, then engineering, then procurement, then construction, and then commissioning. And we start the project. And what Supal has said that rightly, we start selection of service provider. So we go in the market, we want the cheapest service provider to give the best, you know, services to us, which is practically not possible. I think we all have to stop saying vendors or logistic service provider. Better we should start saying channel partners. If you are clapping, clap it, you know, loudly. I want to hear all of you, you know, I want to listen from you all of you. And once you'll make a channel partner, those entire perception will be changed. And why I am saying it, it is not that he has come from a different universe. He is also from the same planet. And when we give packing list, we always say that we don't want to share the data. And I don't know what is that data. I have worked for 27 years. You name any company in the world, world-class company I have worked. And always I have advocate about this because I personally believe supply chain and logistic is the sector which where people work more than anybody else in the planet Earth. I will take example of COVID. In COVID, 
I don't know how many of you have realized that every medicine has reached to the last person in the village. If supply chain professional and logistic people would have not worked, I don't think so those medicine would have arrived there. People were clapping for scientists for reaching Chandran on South Pole. There are people who are encouraging medical professionals. But hardly I come across that where people really support and appreciate the supply chain and logistic professionals. So I'll request all of you to give a big round of applause to all the supply chain and logistic professionals. Now I'll come to the point. When we do the project logistics, we never realize that whether we are geared up or we are not geared up. We don't do planning. We start for execution. When I was working for Samsung, for 18 month project, we used to do planning for 12 month and six month execution. But when I joined Indian company, they do the planning for three months and they do the execution for 24 months, the project of 18 months. So answer lies in our question only, how exactly we are catering the need of the project logistics. In project logistics, the day we receive the packing list, we ask for a feasibility study. In the feasibility study, we identify which are the constraints, which are the hurdles, and we start finding out that hurdles. Then we talk about what is the cost for it, how much time it will take. Apart from all these, then we arrive to a conclusion. This will be the lump sum price for transportation of 20 ODC from export to the site. Without realizing that when the documents will be submitted to the government authorities for permissions, those permissions become a never-ending process. You have given that within six months you will deliver my project cargo to the site. And by the time when permissions is obtained, six months is passed. So how are we going to do the project logistics? And why project logistics and supply chain professional has to be blamed for that? So there is, a, there is a question, there is an answer. I will discuss later when I'll find some times. Now I'll bring to a very personal. When we talk about delivery of the cargo, project cargo, so I will divide into four key challenges or five key challenges. We talk about infrastructure. We talk about skilled manpower, talent. Third, I will talk about digitization. Fourth, I will talk about the leadership. When we talk about infrastructure, be it railway, be it NHAI, PWD, Ministry of Surface Transportation, BNR, Bridge and Road, talk about local issues, police, traffic, Nalesh Bhai has talked about CCTV cameras. Nowadays, signboards are there. Exactly, you know, my, my cargo height is 5.2, and the signboard is also fixed on 5.2. After loading on hydraulic axles. So where are you facilitating? Where are you giving us a cushion to transport the equipment? Rather, you are putting a barrier, saying that my signboard height will be 5.5, 5.2. You remove it. And then you go from X works to the site. So these are the infrastructure when we talk about. When we talk about permissions, you apply today. There must be a, some centralized control when the project is announced. All the permission has to be obtained in a single letter or notification. What happens if railway is there? then at least 15 branches will be there for the coordination. And I think, who knows better than Nalesh Bhai. So once you go to the railway permissions, that gentleman says that I'm not the final authority, final authority is sitting in Ahmedabad. So the person who is in Mumbai, he has to go to Ahmedabad to coordinate that. End of the day, you will find that your entire effort 
your entire money goes into obtaining the permission for transportation of equipment and by the time your equipment has arrived at the discharge port and then equipment starts its journey comes out after 10 kilometers you come to know that the bypass is not ready why the bypass has to be made by a supply chain professionals and even if he has made the bypass when he crosses the bypass after a 100 meters he realized that his you know the uh, access has got a stuck in the mud and then company like us comes forward to start saying that you have not done good job you have not made the bypass properly you have not done the engineering you have not compacted it what supply chain professional has to reply back he'll be keep saying i have done a good job without realizing that he is not an engineer it is not his job his job is core job is to transport the equipment from x place to the site but no we again come to that believe me today if you ask me honestly in india almost all the project is about 1.3 to 1.7 times delay than the contractual time and we talk about profitable growth what is the profitable growth we talk that you know india is growing and everybody is growing growing means profitable growth if there is no profit there is no growth but when we talk about this kind of heavy equipment and heavy equipment believe me it is not a cup of tea of everybody everybody cannot do this today the project is becoming the size of the project is becoming day by day bigger and bigger the size of the equipment is getting bigger how many of how many companies there who can handle this kind of equipment can anybody raise the hand or can can you give me the mic how many companies do you feel that in india who can handle more than 1000 crores project there are company one or two company who can handle this kind of project and why it is happening it is happening basically you know there is no margin there is no money there is no uh, kind of infrastructure there is no support and how long you will be struggling like this so now time has come the mega projects are coming up in india we have to involve all the stakeholders without saying that this is not my responsibility and everyone each one of us should have a complete visibility of end to end because when the cargo is getting ready then lsp says it is not my job because contract has not given to me so he is not bothered about the center of gravity of the equipment he is not bothered about the saddle when equipment is ready by the time when the axle has to be placed he realized that cg is out of axles how he is going to transport and throughout the journey he will be in shock he will not be able to do that and when comes to the final delivery believe me it is a pathetic we are also struggling 32 month project now company is asking to complete it in 28 months but if your cargo is going to be delayed the entire project is going to be delayed so enough i have talked in the favor of supply chain professionals now let me talk about against in the supply chain professionals you know what is our stake when we are building a plant like iocl panipat barmer paradeep arbit mathura our stake is very big there are a lot of issues which comes in we have already mobilized our equipment we have mobilized our resources but just because my heavy lift my heavy equipment odc and sodc has not delivered my 1610 crane is standing at site and every month i am paying more than 1 crores 1.5 crores then lsp comes in between and he starts saying ki sir this has happened because of permission this has become because of bypasses this has become because of local issues can we go back to the government and an organization those who have given this job to us that because of delay of lsp we are not able to deliver our equipment to the site absolutely not 
and we as a lnt we ensure that at any cost we meet the schedule and that is why today proudly we can say that we are here to have at least 60% of the project in the country whose lnt is executing and delivery is the basically is a is a really really very difficult and is a great challenge for all of us to make sure that if the delivery is delayed our entire project will be delayed i will ask you very personal question should i how many of you got any your daughter and son married just raise the hand nan are mukesh bhai aap to bol sakte hain <laughs> okay you know when we go to pandit what he says he said 915 day date and muhurta and on that particular timing 915 1030 1045 we perform that functions what happens when it comes to the personal affair very dot very particular time you are able to perform this but when it comes to the project why we are not able to do this can anybody tell this because here we put all our resources all our heart and soul to ensure that this has happened and this is what this kind of temperament is required to execute heavy lift projects and if you don't have that temperament to execute such kind of heavy lift then it is very difficult to do that when we talk about what are the two components can you tell in the project which is important in the project delivery time and cost which is very important which leads each other when we talk about time and cost why we miss this you know timing and and uh, ultimately if the time is going to be a more cost is going to be a more but why don't we put our heart and soul to ensure that these things has been taken care but when we do the project i think many of us we don't realize and by the time when the project is completed we always lose money on that so my two suggestions and submission is here when you do the project logistics your temperament is required secondly you need a very high skill people today in india 40 to 50 million people a skill worker every year is required and kpmg has submitted the report also now with 2025 it is going to be a 75 million workers so i am not talking about these workers i am talking from where you are going to bring engineers from where you are going to the project management people and these are the things which is the eye opener for all of us so i think nilesh bhai i have thank taken you. lot of time thank you so over to you and i talk your passion for the subject was shown out here thank you very much uh, and we appreciate uh, the uh, the time that you've given us and um, we 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 look forward to gaining out of that uh captain uh you know you've you've been a mentor here to our industry from time to time you've guided our industry what is right and what is wrong uh you've, you 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 have you are a very customer centric person um what kind of an what is an what is the role of an agent or the importance of a good agent while choosing a project carrier thank you good morning uh thank you ayushi organizers for uh, and also mohit ji for bringing this uh, project uh, cargo subject in this uh, forum because it's a very very important subject i think we have seen uh, last two decades as an era where india has evolved in terms of infrastructure and what uh, uh, shashikant ji and uh, anand bhai was saying uh, 
and also Supal, is that India's infrastructure needs various projects and good partners. And what I think what he mentioned, I think one of the small uh, part we as an agent play in making sure that eventually the execution happens on the ship, either loading or discharging. And there's a lot of things go into that. Uh, I'll just give a little brief about Samsara. Uh, what we are, besides the other activities, we also have uh, a lot of uh, footprint in the project cargo shipping agency. We represent various reputed project cargo carriers for last almost two decades. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, particularly the last decade has been uh, an era where there is an infrastructural as well as industrial transformation in India. And we have been, uh, say, has played a very small role because as a shipping agent, but then again a very significant role in seeing how the uh, developments of infrastructure have happened. Uh, we have, uh, you know, handled various projects in the ports as a shipping agent. Uh, I'll just give you a few examples which, uh, you know, it may not be very well known to people that this also happens, but uh, certainly it is quite, you know, relevant. We see uh, uh, there was a phase where all the new airports were coming up in India. And we were bringing in a lot of aero bridges on which when you walk into the aircraft, I think there were about 30 to 40 shipments of aero bridges came on all our, on our ships and discharged in Mumbai port. And then they were distributed to various airports in India as the airports were being constructed. Now I think it may be probably made, make in India, but I don't see it coming anymore. But we used to import it from, there was a lot of planning going in those aero bridges because they were very fragile looks very fragile when it comes, lands on a truck. But the way the storage has to be done, the way it has to be, you know, planned to be discharged. Same way we were also involved in uh, the entire Delhi Metro project. There were about 20 shipments for the Denny tunnel to be drilled. And there were the drilling machines which were coming from China and various other countries. And there was a lot of planning required. And then after we discharged, of course, it had to go right up to the uh, Delhi for uh, that. The recent ones, what we have done, we have done many reactors. We have done many modules. In fact, uh, LNT modules, we have been involved in loading many reactors for uh, compressors and uh, many other such projects which we have done. One of the important projects which you will see coming up next year early January is getting inaugurated is uh, the Mumbai Trans Harbor link, where we had 40 shipments, 20 on Bombay port and 20 on Navasheva port. And they were all the important bridge parts which were coming from an EPC contractor from Japan. And most of it was handled during the COVID period. And they had to be handled with such diligence and care. It was like, a, you know, we have to take care of even a smallest of scratch. So when he was saying that, uh, you know, we have to clap for the logistics professional, the ports, the stevedores, our people, and so much of planning used to go while we were talking on the teams, but then our people were on the ground to take care of all these uh, smallest and minute aspects of bridge. And now when we see that bridge getting opened, inaugurated next month, a lot of it has come through our uh, various principals whom we uh, work with. And, uh, and, and as of yesterday, uh, one important uh, development which has happened for country as in India is we have discharged in Bombay port a mobile MRI machine. Now this MRI machine has come from Europe and this is, uh, okay, as a equipment it is nothing like what LNT or Thermax would carry, but it's a sort of a refrigerated unit which is like a reefer container, little bigger than that. And there was a lot of planning since last six months it has been going. This MRI machine is going to go to Ames, Delhi. And after that, if this becomes, this is like a trial shipment, if this becomes successful to all our remote and villages, uh, these machineries will be, uh, no, these mobile MRI machines will be uh, you know, positioned and then we can reach out to masses with this. So this is another thing which 
So we have been handling all these different types of projects. So all of them have been coming through very, very reputed carriers. One, I would say also an experience, I must also uh, explain that, while we do so many other things, we also do on the flat tracks, we also do on Roro, many windmill projects we have handled. We have also handled the helicopter which came for Mr. Vijay Malia, which never got cleared. And it landed up into an uncleared cargo for two years and our principals had to pay $20,000 to the Chennai Port Trust because of the rules and regulations. So, so these are also some of the sad things which happen when we work, but then again, since we have a reputed carrier behind us, we as an agent were secured. And these things become very, very important because all these cargoes and plan the amount of planning about this MRI machine, as I mentioned, the amount of planning and coordination which went right up from the fixture stage to the loading to even discharging as of yesterday, a lot of things go. We have loaded so many modules out of LNT Hazira up to 1,000 metric ton and plus with a three meter draft you know, three to four meter draft. And uh, I think Shishikanji will know what all challenges go through that channel. So my request is that while we work with various reputed carriers, there are so many other carriers also in the market, I will not deny that. What, when you don't work with reputed carrier, I think Nilesh by himself ran into a rough patch with someone very recently. And uh, so what happens is a very, very sad experience because it uh, delays the project Besides the value of the cargo itself, the uh, project cost is, I think, uh, exorbitantly high. And if you delay by a project which is supposed to reach in 20 or 30 days and it goes into three months, so we can imagine the consequential losses which people come across through that. So my request is that whenever you are choosing a carrier, I think there's a credibility of the carrier is extremely important. There are a lot of players. Yesterday also, I think Dr. Cornelis uh, or someone mentioned that cheapest is not the best. Cost is important, but at the same time, when it comes to projects, efficiency and time has to be given more priority. And that is where working with reputed companies, reputed carriers, reputed partners is, is a very, very extremely important role. Second important thing I would request is, on particularly for India, the way we are moving, I think next two decades will be even more important as far as projects are concerned. And I will like to appeal two things. One is the infrastructure in the ports, particularly key ports like Chennai, Mumbai, Kandla, the government ports. Private ports are there, but then the cost is excep exceptionally high and it is, they are not preferred as yet. So the infrastructure inside the port, there's a lot of things to be done. We are handling big projects, but with a very, very basic infrastructure. And that is somewhere we need to see how that can be improved because that will not help us to uh, deliver the projects in the way it should be. Second important thing, again, I would say what our panel uh, panelists have mentioned is creating the talent pool. I think when we are looking at efficiency, we as a community have to come together, create a talent pool, bring in that expertise, bring in that training, bring in that, uh, you know, uh, uh, people, experts from various parts of the world, if not in India, and see how we can train our people better. And because they are eventually going to be uh, involved in the entire supply chain at every stage. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pankaj Bhai, uh, Captain. Uh, you know, I, I must share, uh, uh, Though they may, they, they are agents of a carrier and the cargo owners are not their customers or anything, but when they're handling the cargo, they handle it as if it's their cargo. It's my personal experience. So what's important is choosing, when you're choosing a carrier, you have to look at who the agent on both the sides are. Uh, and this is first-hand experience. So it, all this is part of project planning. What I'm trying to come to is please look at every aspect, every nut and bolt, every loop of project logistics. And every, every link is important and just to be firmly handled. Uh, we have, we go, probably running a little short on time, so we're gonna do a one quick rapid fire, so request all to you know address each question a bit 
yeah, short. Uh, so I'll start with Pankaj Bhai. Pankaj Bhai, in this digitized world uh, where project logistics very, very specially is an extremely uh, people-driven. Um, uh, we may use tools to run, uh, deliver a project, but end of the day, the validation is going to be by people. Artificial intelligence is far away, in my personal opinion, on project logistics uh, for now at least. But tell me, do you think uh, a thing like project freight, brake bulk freight, can get commoditized or get digitized where two computers talk to each other and decide, okay, we pick this carrier at this rate? Is it, do you foresee such a thing? I'll give you, I think since you said it, we have to be brief in this, uh, I think many people have tried. Shipping cannot work like make my trip. So, so, uh, and you as you had rightly said, no two projects are the same. So digitizing the freight, I think it's a far cry. I would not think that it will happen. But yes, there is a lot of scope of digitizing our processes, the way we handle our uh, projects, uh, the planning, the execution, and everything. But uh, as far as the freight is concerned, uh, or even commoditization also, it will, it will not be easy. I think it, everything will be different. A project is not even like containers. You know, containers you can still standardize and say, okay, 20, 40, these are the rates. But here, every project, every uh, uh, thing is, has got too many variables to factor in to make it actually. Thank you. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, make my trip is more of a business to consumer. Uh, here it is business to business with, uh, you know, has cargo and technical cargo. So. I hope it doesn't get commoditized. I, I would I think like to add, Nilesh Bhai, I agree that it will not be digitalized, but I personally believe the marketplace will emerge, where at least the transparency will come, and the shipper will have a more options to choose through a marketplace. So I, I definitely see, while partially it will be digitalized. Completely agree with you. Uh, so I'll, 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 take, I'll take with you, Supat. What is uh, required for the government to allow you to expand your international business without opening a satellite office in Dubai, in Singapore, which I'm extremely uh, unhappy with, with the government where they are not really supporting the logistics industry to go global. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm very, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, unhappy the way they are ignoring this question of ours all the time. What do you feel? Do you think uh, a gift city is a solution to us or will they open up uh, the channels for us to grow? I think the objective of the GIP city, it, the planning started long back and the focus was basically for the finance industry and the technology industry. Well, recently, definitely we tried to approach government because we are Indian registered company. We do charter vessels, we do uh, lease the container. And uh, there are few complexities, uh, you know, when, when you operate uh, your business uh, in India. You know? I think uh, India is gearing up. It's not that the government is not ready. Recently, there are some development. Well, now they are allowing Indian companies because why do you go to Singapore or Dubai for registering your NVOCC business, uh, mainly, problems related to the direct and indirect taxes. This is the main problems, right? Or if you want to borrow money in foreign currencies, then again, there are too much uh, regulations. Still work in progress because as a Gibbs city, they consider services purely as a services and the product purely as a product. They are not allowing mixing two things, but in shipping, uh, we do buy a lot of spare parts. We do require all the, our hardwares do require a maintenance. So it's a work under progress. Government probably need to bring an expert on their panel. Government cannot ignore, as Sasiji also uh, rightly said, I think uh, while India is growing, but is it going to be a profitable and a sustainable growth? Government need to bring a regulations. But I see a change is coming, because I say wherever there is a demand, supply will follow. I will only add Nilesh Pai, well, Gibbs City is work under progress for our industry. But I think uh, I would like to probably share another success story of India is at least as a logistic service provider, we started getting all our export receipts in Indian rupees. 
And I really congratulate Reserve Bank of India or a finance ministry at least to dream that as an Indian, it's a proud moment. Well, I do not not uh, lose uh, forex exchange gain and loss. So many countries, India has already established infrastructure. Ask your finance teams to study. We are successfully getting around eight percent of my revenue in Indian rupees. And according to me, I think this is something where uh, all the logistics uh, professional can study because this will save a lot of hassle for them in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Supa. Um, Sashi ji, a quick one, a short one. Would you like to share a case study, an experience where uh, some detailing uh, was missed out and caused some logistics challenge or a detailing which was discussed which saved uh, from uh, some mishap. A quick one, please. Thank you, Nilesh Bhai. I'll share quickly three things. One is the proactiveness. Project cargo cannot be delivered without having a complete visibility, and you have to be proactive. Second is skill manpower. Whatever we are talking today, we are in a crisis, and we have to come out of this. Third, I will highlight a little bit on digital. So first I'll take digital and then, then I'll come to this one. Today, when we execute a project, earlier we used to, like 10 to 15 years back, we were not having, the environment was not so favorable. But today, when my people goes inside the campus, sitting in Baroda office, we can count how many people have entered because we have put the RFID on their helmet so that when they enter, I need not to be dependent on the people that, you know, whether uh, Mohan or Shyam has given 50 people or 60 people or 70 people. So here we are, we are not going to rely on anybody. If 100 people has entered, 100 people will be there. There is no question of error. So this is the power of digitization. Even sometimes people are inside, even because of geofencing, we are able to even identify in particular area how many people are there. When it comes to CCTV camera, we can zoom the camera, we can see the location, even sitting in office, we can guide people that what are the, you know, rectification or modification can be done. Last but not the least is the drone. It's a beautiful digital era, I can tell you. We have experimented in our two sites where, believe me, Sitting in office, our engineers are guiding them how to put your bolt and nuts in which direction and how exactly it will be fitted. And it was successfully done at the height of 128 meter. So I think in a digital era, this is, this is something which is going to be a miracle. But there are many more things which years to come where you will find that at least 50% of your issues has been I will not talk about meta. Meta is going to be a very exciting one. That is also another. I'll come to manpower. I don't know. We all are talking about, you know, project logistics. We are talking about companies. We are talking about mega projects. We are talking about infrastructures. But believe me, these manpower, skill manpower is going to be a really, really big issue for all of us. We are, every year we are producing 12 million engineers but hardly 10% engineers are employable. Even out of that 10%, I think not even 0.1% is coming for the you know, logistics. They are going to software, they are going in mechanical engineering, they are going in other sectors. And last but not the least, because of time, I'm not able to talk on that. You know, This is something which I'm talking about, that project logistics, case study, I'll leave it to Nilesh Bhai. I don't have Thank much you. time. Thank yeah. you so much. Sorry to push you. Uh, one quick one minute answer, Ananji. Sorry, uh, you know, as logistics service providers, we get only that much time from the customer. I I'm just going to do that to you today. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, you, government has come up with new platforms and new policies. There is uh, ULIP coming, and uh, your United Logistics platform is 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 in making. So, do you have any suggestions um, uh, on simplification of? Uh, exports or for make in India or for just basic uh, data management in relation to logistics? Uh, see, uh, that's a quick question and it's a very interesting one. From the ULIP perspective, 
the aspirations are very high from across and there's a lot of expectations across the globe, okay? The way UPI had come up, we and I as an individual personally feel that ULIP can make a big difference across on it. There are a lot of ask in and around it, which is possible, not possible, probably we might not be able to discuss. But one teething issue, what I came to know when I was discussing with one of very senior colleague in the industry who, want, who has been working with the ULIP uh, team on that front is, on the agreement side, like even on the NDA that is getting signed between the provider, service providers and one has to get into the platform. I understand there's a lot of catch that has come up as a part of a government wherein it felt that the limited liability or the concerns with respect to liability had been a challenge for people to come on board and sign off on that front. If something can be thought on that, probably yes. I have still not got the details what exactly is it. I'll also personally run through that. But this is something which had come back to me strongly from a couple of guys and one of the senior individuals. So this is something I think can make a quick difference to us on that front as a first step to onboard. And probably other areas will fall in place. And as rightly said by the team across, Digitization in shipping and logistics is just not tracking. And when it comes to project logistics, it's a lot of other things right from the inception till the reconciliation of the payments that happens for the particular projects. So one has to be very cognizant when uh, the solutions to the project logistics members is being delivered or is being discussed on that front. And people have to appreciate that what are the concerns that are around in order to do it. Most of the individuals across has been great in terms of the work and we have a lot of regards and respect to on that front. This ask I always have in my most of the conference and I keep it as an ending thing is that we all are specialized in something or the other but we are not specialized in every other job to be done. So let's take help across the table. So as a panel, I would say, if I do not have a fair understanding, probably I'll go to Captain Pankaj. I, if I have something on that front, I might go to Sejil. So let's try to build up that rapo across the globe and let's try to be more collaborative and make it happen. Thanks and kudos to all the logistics team across the globe, actually. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I am going to summarize. I don't know if there's any possibility of questions on, of, of Okay, we've run out of time. So I'm just going to summarize, guys. Project logistics is like doing a brain surgery. You have to have all your details in place, the minutest, everything other than cargo also needs to be studied, whether it's the stool, the steel, the nuts, the bolts, etc. So, and if you have any questions after the session, please, the panel, the panel is here offline to answer all your questions. Thank you very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, incredible team with these leaders taking charge. I am sure we will deliver more and more successful projects. Also, the importance of teamwork is highlighted so beautifully. Thank you to our panelists and our wonderful moderator for empowering us with such great knowledge.